one seed, one world. Uh, we are here on, well, I guess today is the first day of fall. It is solstice day. Um, things are starting to look a little ratty in the garden. Things are starting to die off. You know, some blight and stuff that's taken a lot of tomatoes. And I haven't been here in a couple weeks because I uh, took a trip out to Montana for my mom's 90th birthday. Um, so just the, I, I drove out there. It took me about three and a half days to get there and three and a half days to get back. And I was just there for the weekend. But got to meet up with all of my brothers and sisters and brother-in-law, sister-in-law, some nieces and nephews and celebrate my mom's 90th birthday. So that was pretty awesome. Um, but, you know, after being gone for a couple of weeks in the garden, uh, or being gone for a couple of weeks, the garden is um, in need of some help. It's been <laughs> neglected a bit. I've got a lot of Anaheim peppers that are coming in, a whole uh, bunch of shishitos, a uh, whole bunch of uh, fish peppers, and then also I got some tomatoes and stuff out here that I want to try to get picked. Yesterday we got another big thing of cucumelons that I need to pickle today. So just trying to get things caught up and cleaned out and maybe even do some planting. Uh, I know it might be kind of weird to plant this late in the year, but there are some crops that you can still put in depending on what growing zone that you're in. If you're farther north, um, you know, you're going to probably have less of a chance uh, or less of an opportunity to plant now. Some of you might have already experienced some frost. Uh, for here in Zone 6B, right now our days are in the 70s and 50s at night, and it's supposed to be that way for the next couple of weeks. So um, even the crops that I can put in here are pretty limited at this point because we're probably only about a month out from first frost. Depending. Sometimes it extends a little bit longer, but uh, we'll see see how it goes. But things like lettuces and uh, kale, um, even some cabbage and stuff, if you have a cover for it, like a plastic cover, hoop bed, something like that, or a greenhouse that you could start it in, uh, you might even be able to do some cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, that kind of thing, uh, bok choy. Um, so I'm just doing some, some test things here and see uh you know what comes up and you know if i can get anything still between now and when it gets too cold for anything but even things like kale they can benefit from uh, some light frost it actually improves the flavor so um, i don't know if i really need to plant any more kale though i've got quite a bit over here so i got my hoop open here on on the bed but i'll tell you what that row cover on the hoop did an amazing job with keeping the cabbage moss off of my kale this year. I've been able to harvest it uh, a couple different times. I probably actually could have harvested it a lot more than what I did, uh, but I just didn't keep up with it. But I have frozen some, we had some for some meals, and uh, probably the ones that benefited the most off of the kale were the chickens. We come out here and pick handfuls and, and feed them the kale as well so um, they're big fans of it but I'm gonna try to get in here today and even looking at it now um, there's a little bit of I'm not sure what something was in here eating that that looks like some I'm not really sure what that was if that was some eggs or what but uh, overall it's been pretty protected and like I said even looking at it now you know, nice healthy green leaves. Um, that hoop cover uh, kept it warm and moist in here. It really held, helped hold the moisture in. And so the plants did really well. Uh, it was almost like a, a mini greenhouse kind of effect that it, that it put on it with holding the moisture in. So, and the plants seemed to benefit from that. Uh, you know, with some things um, like tomatoes and whatnot, you wouldn't want to put them under a hoop uh, because holding all that moisture in is going to increase uh, thing, you know, fungus things that affect tomatoes. But kale, you know, they're not normally affected in that same manner. Uh, so you just have to choose the crops that will benefit the best. But your your coal crops, if you cover covering, keeping them covered with a row cover, 
is going to keep out things like cabbage worms, cabbage moths, those kind of things uh, that will just decimate your crop really fast and they can take some of that um, higher moisture content uh, that tomatoes would not do so well in. So we're going to get some kale in here today and give some chicken some too. Hey chick chicks. What do you think? Where's everybody? Two, four, five, six. A couple girls must be in laying eggs, huh? Alice, you want and some kale? Got nummy? Girls want some num nums? I just like that stuff, huh? Hey, what well, the Scarlet Runner beans are still coming along. This is the hoop. And um, I was amazed when I came back from Montana that the whole top of this hoop above uh, on the outside was completely covered in new orange blossoms, even still this time of year. Um, but I, I'm leaving all the beans on here uh, to dry out. And some of them are almost ready, I think, actually. But there's still a lot of green ones in here. Let's see what this one looks like. Mm, that one's not looking so hot. We've had a lot of uh, rain while I was away, too. And so I think some of these ones I left on the vine still kind of damp and not looking too great but some of them are looking good so I showed you guys those last year on my November harvest video but they're a beautiful bean good substitute for kidney beans um, you know they're a big meaty bean that you can use in chilies and whatnot but uh, they're much prettier than a kidney bean Whew. So, sitting down to take a little break here. Uh, I've been cleaning out the back corner of the garden over here that has uh, where the cucumbers used to be. And I had kind of let that area get a bit overgrown um, once the cucumbers died off. So, got that all cleaned out, but wanted to sit down and take a, a moment to rest by the greenhouse and the little waterfall here in the back. But um, one thing I wanted to mention was about garden diversity. One thing that I've gotten into in just, you know, for me personally in the last couple of years is diversifying my garden outside of just growing vegetables. And for a lot of you, if you've been gardening for a while, this might not be a new thing. Um, you know, incorporating flowers into your garden space does a couple of different things one you get a lot of the beauty of the flowers you know all the different colors and and whatnot um, but de depending on what kind of flowers that you're incorporating you know if you're growing sunflowers you can have food for yourself or food for the birds we have um, you know a lot of like cardinals especially cardinals and blue jays but here specifically more cardinals we have pairs of them that come through and they spend most of their day in the patches of sunflowers that i had planted around the summer and you know they're way past their peak now they're not pretty anymore they're kind of dead looking and all drooped over uh, but there's a lot of seeds in there and that's where the cardinals are hanging out um, with other flowers like zinnias and celosia uh, coxcomb cosmos marigolds you know, these all attract good pollinators. They're, they're going to be food for your bees, um, but not just bees. You know, the amount of different things that I have seen come into this garden since I've started planting zinnia around. I don't, I might put one or two in with the vegetables, but generally I kind of plant it around the garden edge along my pathway to the greenhouse and whatnot. 
at all kinds of butterflies, moths, um, hummingbird moths, which are really cool to see. We, this year we've had some monarch butterflies come through, viceroy, swallow black swallowtail, eastern tiger swallowtail, um, and a lot of other, you know, just very pretty things that you are giving food to, uh, as well as like parasitic wasps and um, all kinds of other like little creatures that come through. And attracting these good kind of bugs are going to help pollinate your vegetable plants. Um, and some of the insects that are attracted may also eat some of the bad bugs that get into your garden. Like parasitic wasps will come in. Um, one thing that you can uh, plant to attract those is dill and let the dill go to flower. And parasitic wasps like those. But parasitic wasps will eat um, the eggs and, and larvae of squash bugs. So it's, you know, it's not going to wipe out your squash bug population but it helps maybe you along working along with the insects um, can just kind of make it beneficial for everybody less squash bugs for you to deal with and then it's food for good pollinators we also uh, you know I have seen several over the past couple years little cocoons for praying mantis and praying mantis of course will eat bad bugs um, there's assassin bugs and wheel bugs and, you know, uh, roly polies, little pill bugs. They are great for your soil. Um, different types of spiders, ants, you know, ants will help um, aerate the soil by making all their little tunnels and stuff. I, you know, I see a lot of people trying to get rid of ants and I get it if it's fire ants, but uh, just your general, you know, black or brown ant that's living out in the garden building little hills. Um, they do farm aphids if you have an aphid issue, but ants still have a lot of beneficial things that they do for your garden. And, you know, let them, let them be. Let them do their thing because they will help you out. The roly-poly bugs, the, the pill bugs, you know, they help take heavy metals out of the soil. Um, but, you know, just all these kinds of things, if you are changing up and trying new things to incorporate and diversify your garden, you're going to get a lot of benefits out of that. It's going to help you and help the nature around you. And it's, it's all natural ways that you can do these things without, you know, to, to garden organically and, and not have to use sprays and, and all that kind of thing. Um, also, you know, like I've been playing these long beans and the scarlet runner beans. They provide all kinds of blossoms that bees, hummingbirds, and other pollinators uh, really like. And so then you get you know just the the beauty of you know hummingbirds flitting around your garden big fat bumblebees and all that kind of thing it's it's uh, it's a good thing so consider if you have not already uh, consider incorporating other types of herbs and flowers in with just your regular vegetables and as it goes to vegetables try some new varieties some heirlooms and stuff that maybe flower differently and 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 will bring in a different type of aspect to your garden. Not only do you get the new kinds of vegetables to try, and you might find ones that you like better than you know your standard green bean or your standard bean or your standard pepper or whatever it is. You know you get to try these different types of new vegetables, and a lot of them have a lot of color variations that you might not normally see in, in your general hybrid or something that you would just get regularly. Um, I enjoy trying new plants all the time and the big thing is incorporating for me has been incorporating more herbs and flowers into the garden and I want to continue to expand on that because there's there's so many benefits and just coming out and seeing your your flowers growing along the edge of your garden and is just uh, gives you some extra zen in there. Now if you are you know just gardening in the city uh, or an apartment where maybe you can only have a couple of pots on a balcony or maybe on a rooftop or something like that, you're going to be limited into the types of things that you can add in. But you could always do a little side pot. You know, over here, maybe you got a couple of pots of tomatoes, peppers, whatever. Um, and then maybe on this side of your balcony, you know, put a, a pot with some zinnias in it or something. And then you can still diversify even on a very small scale. So. 
just something to think about. So this is a uh, just a little eight by four wooden bed that I have. I've got uh, six of these in the garden of this size. And this is where the cucumbers were growing. I took the, uh, weeded it out and took the, all the old cucumber plants out that were dead and whatnot and took the trellis out. And so now I'm just kind of raking over the top of the soil, loosen it up a little bit to plant some new stuff. And, you know, I don't want to disturb the soil too much. Not so much like that no dig type stuff, but you know, the, the farther you dig down and overturn your soil, you're disturbing a lot of the good microbes and whatnot that are in there. Um, and then that just reduces the quality of your soil. Um, can, you know, maybe even cause more weeds and stuff to come up. So I'm just kind of raking across to loosen it up the top, break it up just a hair and keep maybe just like a, let me go down about like maybe a half inch or so. Uh, inch tops. Oh, found a little purple onion. I did have some onions growing in here, um, but they kind of got buried underneath of the cucumbers, and I didn't really get any out of this bed because I kind of smothered the onions with the cucumbers, and it wasn't the best place to put them in, I guess. But uh, you know, I was just trying to fit some things in around and. You know, sometimes your experiments work and sometimes they don't. I think I got another one in here, but a little white onion. Not very big, but edible. So we'll we'll save that. Put that on a salad or something. Alright, so let's see what we can plant in here. Okay, so I'm probably pushing this uh, in regards to the amount of time I have for the growing season. Um, but I've got some Rocky Top lettuce salad mix. And this is just a random mix of different greens, uh, like the single green salads, uh, instead of, you know, like getting a, um, you know, like an iceberg lettuce where you get like the big head of lettuce. These are all like where you kind of just broadcast the seeds and uh, you get a mix of all different types of single leaf lettuces uh, that if you have enough time they would you know continue to grow you could harvest and they would grow back and you harvest more kind of like you would with like spinach or swiss chard or kale and those kinds of things um, but we're gonna see i keep finding little onions all through here uh, i ended up with a, a handful of them so that'll be good but I'm just gonna loosely put these all through here and see kind of what happens. Now, I might not get anything. You know, depending on when our first frost shows up, these might not do very well. But I thought it'd be fun to try, and you know, what else are you gonna do in the fall but plant some lettuce and other stuff? All right, package one for that half of the bed. We'll do another package over here on this half of the bed. Again, I'm not putting them in rows, I'm not thinning out anything. I'm just sprinkling through, broadcasting all the seeds, and we're going to see if we get... Oh, I think I might put those too thick. <laughs> didn't get anything over there in that corner. All right, that's okay. Um, maybe I'll throw some radishes or something over right through here. That corner didn't get anything. But this stuff gets planted pretty shallow. So instead of like 
making ro rows and covering them over. I'm just kind of sprinkling them across the top and then brushing my hand lightly across to lightly cover and kind of even broadcast them about some more. Another onion over here and <laughs> getting them all over the place. So there we go. And it's supposed to rain uh, tonight and tomorrow and even into Thursday, I think. Um, and this soil is actually kind of moist already uh, from all the leftover stuff that was in here, I think kind of helped hold the moisture in the dirt. Um, I might do a quick spray with the hose just to water, water them in a little bit more before the rain, just in case we don't get the rain that they're saying that we're gonna get. Um, but we'll see, who knows? Maybe it'll come up really good and be awesome. Maybe it won't come up at all. Maybe it'll come up and frost and kill it. Uh, maybe it'll come up and our local resident rabbit will eat it all. I don't know. Um, but I think it's fun to try and we'll see what kind of what kind of happens here. In these cooler weathers, I don't have to worry about it bolting. You know, we're at a, a good temperature wise. So, you know, because with lettuces, spinach, and that kind of thing with the high heat, It'll tend to sprout really quick, quickly and go immediately to seed. This time of year, you don't have to worry about that. But we do have to worry about having enough time to grow before it gets too cold for things to germinate and really get going. And then of course, you know, a frost is gonna kill off lettuce. This is not a cold hardy plant, <laughs> uh, but we'll see what happens. Got some Anaheims. Uh, they're not huge, but they'll be good for some roasting um, and figure out some recipes with these. Uh, but I'm gonna get back here and pick some more peppers and uh, who knows what else, whatever I can find in here. I got a nice little basket going on of um, Thai basil and uh, some banana peppers, tomatoes, Anaheim peppers and I still got the kale and fish peppers and stuff to get to. So, as well as a lot more of neglected garden to clean up. But I hope you guys are all having a very happy fall solstice day and that whatever's going on in your neck of the woods and your greenhouses and gardens and homesteads is all going great for you. And, um, you know, come back and check out some more videos and we will see you again soon. Have a fantastic day. Namaste.